Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we want to talk about ISP config. This is a video I did promise a while ago, and I have been working on figuring out how to use the system fairly proficiently before doing a video. We're going to do a series of three videos. The pros video today, hey, how this works beautifully. We're going to talk about the cons, and then we're going to do a more full comprehensive review of my experience trying to build websites with this and working with the server and system itself. So of course, ISP config is a free and open source alternative to cPanel. So whether you have run your own website and you've purchased a hosting account, you've probably purchased a cPanel, uh, a cPanel host and control panel, or if uh, you happen to be, in my case, a web developer looking to manage different people's servers or giving people access to manage their own servers, this is one of the FOSS alternatives that you can look into. And if you don't know of any other ones here, please let me know because I'm interested in probing around with all of the different alternatives to see how these guys are going to work for us. So with that, we will go ahead and have a brief look at their website. Now, I originally wanted to do a top five type video, but uh, I don't know if I had exactly five items, and I just wanted to do a overall comprehensive pros of using this system. So of course, their website is at ispconfig.org. You can log in over here, and you can see where their model here. Uh, you can, um, you know, more than 40,000 downloads per month. Very good. Um, it's open source, very transparent, very free, no extra, extra data collection. It's stable. It does have a lot of community support and development, which is good. And uh, we'll talk about some of that's a pro, some of that's a con. We'll kind of get into that uh, a little bit later on. Now, their overall revenue model, they give out the software for free. Their support is actually you purchase the documentation. You do have some online documentation. It's not quite as good. You can purchase the user's manual one time, or you can purchase a subscription to it, which will get you the rolling updates to the manual. So over here, you can see what the server and functions and features are. First, you can put it on a variety of different Linux distributions. I'm running mine. The one we're using today is going to be on Debian 10 on my Linode server. You also have the Ubuntu option, 16 to 20, and CentOS 7 and 8. Of course, CentOS is kind of going a little bit by the wayside. We did a whole video on CentOS and the end of CentOS the other day. So go ahead and have a look at that. Uh, is this going to continue supporting with I, uh, with CentOS Stream? Uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll see where that is. Their features, just like cPanel, you can manage one or more servers from a single control panel, uh, which is single servers or multiple servers. You can actually tie in a variety of different servers into one control panel should you want to do that. And it can work with a virtual machine. It can work with uh, physical servers as well. So my in-office test of this machine is actually using uh, a Raspberry Pi which is works great. Actually, I can test some websites and services I've wanted to test for a while locally without messing up anything else. And then I can actually also tie it into the cloud servers as well. A variety of different languages. They support many different uh, daemons here for your web server, HTTP server as Apache 2 or Nginx, whichever one you would like to do. For email, SMTP is Postfix. Um, the IMAP and uh, POP3 is Dovecot. We have peer FT, FTPD for FTP. We have uh, bind and power DNS for the DNS servers and databases, Maria and MySQL. So you have that as an option. You can manage your websites, email accounts, FTP users, databases, cron jobs, shell users, DNS, and IVP4 and SIG support. For access levels, you can do a full administrator to administrate the whole server. You have the reseller option, which is going to give you the ability to create new client accounts but not do full server management. You have the client can manage their own resources, and you have the ability to utilize email on the web server, or you can actually connect it up to like a Thunderbird or anything like that. So let's go ahead and have a look at what the server looks like. All right, so uh, looking at my login here, and this is on my Linode server. So you can use my affiliate code, tlm.li forward slash Linode, get $100 in credit, good for 60 days to play around with servers. So my basic server setup here, I installed Debian 10, and then I went through one of the many how to forge uh, perfect server documents. I'll go ahead and put a link to the one that I used in the description. There are a few of them out there. 
for the most part, ISP config is very easy to use. Uh, well, to, very easy to install. It's it's easier to install than it is to actually use. We'll get into that in some of the, the con portion. But nevertheless, you can get this guy logged in here, and uh, when you get it all installed, most of the things in here are, are fairly easy to figure out, although it is not quite as intuitive as cPanel, and several things run a little bit differently than cPanel, so keep that in mind. So looking at what we have here, my basic setup, I have a domain name that I have through my basic registrar. And all I've done is I have on that registrar, I'm not pointing my domain name to the Linode servers uh, like the uh, ns1.linode.com all the way down ns5.linode.com. What I'm actually doing is I've created glue records on the registrar where I have pointing those glue records to this server. And then we're just pointing the DNS to those glue records and from there, I'm allowing my ISP config to manage all my DNS outside of the glue records. So that's how we have it set up, and that's how you would set up any WHM to run a cPanel. Sorry if that's technical, if you just run websites and you don't know the uh, uh, odds and ends of all of the DNS. But nevertheless, that's how we have that set up. So what you're seeing here, um, which is cropped off uh, mostly for the fact that this is a, a test production environment that I might keep around for a while, I have the domain name, which is pointed over, and I'm just going to the domain name.com, and that allows me to access my individual server. So inside of here, the we're looking specifically at the pros here and not uh, a full comprehensive review. That will come later. Your biggest pros, when you get in here, you have a variety of different systems. Inside your client tab, you can create different clients. So I have a personal one, which is basically the websites that are administered through my main admin and then I also have my other user here is a basic quote unquote client, meaning that this second user here really only has access to a couple of resources that I have allowed access. Inside the client view, you have the ability to set email and, uh, and limits. So the limits are how many domains you can have. You can um, set the limits, uh, you know, how many databases, all the different things you can do inside of cPanel, more or less inside of WHM to manage a cPanel you can do with the limit templates and the email templates. You have reseller capabilities, which I've not played around with any of those, but you have those options. And then you can you can add, you can edit the different clients. As far as your, your different um, hosts here, you have a variety of servers and uh, your basic server is going to be whatever is tied to your domain name. Like I said, I'm blocking those ones out. Uh, but then you can see the different other websites that we have going on. So mostly I, I have the thomasmorosky.com domain because every time I logged into an administrator account on, on a GoDaddy server to manage a server for somebody, it's like, hey, you should use this domain. So I bought it from my own registrar. <laughs> okay. And then it's like, I don't really have much else to do with this. Let's go ahead and point it to this to play around with it. And uh, I was able to get it, everything working pretty nicely, and I'll show you that in a bit here. As far as your emails, you can create different emails. Now with the emails, it's not quite as intuitive as cPanel. You have to add the domain first, and then you can add the inboxes. So we have domains, then we have email inboxes. So you can go ahead and create a very nice platform that if you just head on over to the URL slash webmail, you can get to it. All right, so you can see here, I've just gone to the domain name slash webmail and I have a round cube login. So I can log into the round cube here and I can manage all the email here. We also have the ability to plug the server settings into Thunderbird or anything else and do that. As far as your DNS, uh, we're not gonna click in here because it'll be too much to blur out, but uh, you can come in here and you can manage. Let me actually go ahead and give one a try here. You can see down here, you can get in here in your DNS and you can actually go ahead and uh, point the servers. You can go ahead and do things like that. There's monitoring tools. And then you have a variety of other tools to manage the sys server system, including you can update the OS or update ISP config. You can set a variety of different server settings, IP addresses, add different servers, remove different servers. 
So I mentioned four different levels of access. One of them is, of course, the administrator, where we are logged in right now. We're logged in as an administrator. You also have the ability to click on the Clients tab. You have the ability to go in and create clients. So the clients are basically end users. They can go in and, and create uh, create domain names, create inboxes, email boxes, DNS, things like that relative to the limits that they were assigned when the account was created. We also have resellers. These are the ones that can actually create additional accounts and set up a few different set, uh, limits within the constraints of what the administrator have given. And then of course, the other one is, is email users where you can come in here and create the email accounts and things like that. So that is, that is what we have there. Now, the other thing that this has very nice is we have packages. Packages is kind of like your, um, this is kind of like your, uh, your Softaculous install. We have a variety of different packages. You can see um, I was searching for WordPress to see uh, how that was. Uh, I'm not sure I'd use the Chinese simplified translation of WordPress, but this is 5.2, a little out of date, but that's okay. You can just go ahead and install whichever one this is, and then it will go ahead and update itself. If I go in and hit uh, update package list, it might actually give me the more up-to-date ones. I did test around a couple of other things I've been playing around with, so like PHP list is in here. Current version is 3.5, this is 3.39. So uh, again, you can install and just update it here. Oh not Joomla, typed the wrong letter there. So if we go down here, here's Joomla 3.9, here's a 2.5. I would not use the 2.5, but the 3.9 is fairly up to date. I think we're on 3.9.22 or 23 or something as of the time I'm recording this. But you go ahead and install this, it's gonna update. How fast do these work? Well, you just go ahead and uh, click, on the, click on the one, hit the install this package, and then you just kind of pick wherever your install location happens to be, give it a new database password, and then whatever information it needs. So you can install the sa sample data, Here's the password for the administrator's login, accept a license, and literally I did this with WordPress and it actually took about 15 seconds. And then I just went ahead and have a brand new full WordPress site. So I went ahead and uh, did that guy there and I can uh, log in here with whatever the admin credentials were that I had created when I created the account. It has already created the database. It has done all the other things that I need. So if I come in here, here's the database, which is attached to that. Here's the database user that is attached to that. I did not have to manually create the database users or anything else like that. So as far as your pros of ISP config are concerned, there are a lot of various uh, pros to this. It works out fairly well. We have the ability on free and open source software on a, a very inexpensive server to spin this guy up and now I can manage multiple websites. I can access the files with any FTP client. I can enable or disable shell root access. I can use a variety of different PHP versions. There's a lot of functions and features that you can use with ISP config. Now it's not all a walk in the park. They are a, at times a little bit difficult to work with. There are a few things I had to fight with pretty good. And I will talk about that in the next video where we do some cons. So for now, we're going to go ahead and wrap this video up right here. Thank you for watching everybody. And I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.